All right, so we got short block. We What's do. the next step? Um, oil pump, heads, timing set, I think. Yeah, something like that. That makes it a long block. It's long, long. No. Actually tall in these cases. With the big heads. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll, we gotta do some stuff with this oil pump first before we put it on. Um, you guys, like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. Um, appreciate you guys watching. We will get started. All right, let's get to All it. Right, let's yeah. get to it. All right, Dwayne, so what are we doing? Um, so I've got this Ford oil pump. This is for a 2013 to 2014 GT500, specifically those two years. Had a little bit better oil pump. One of the big differences, it's got this solid steel backing plate, um, which is a lot better. They don't, they don't uh, flex um, under high RPM. And it's got a little bit different um, pressure control system in here that's got a longer spring. It's just a little bit more accurate um, and will give us some more pressure, but, um, we're going to rev this a lot higher than they did from the factory. So I've got these fancy boundary pump oil gears. Um, so they're billet. The big thing with the stock gears in here is they're a powdered metal, like a pressed together design. Um, these billet ones will res resist cracking. So we're going to rev this thing quite high. Now there's a lot of debate about whether or not you actually need to do this. But for me, if I'm putting all this effort into a short block, I'm just going to do it and make it right. So. We'll put these in. Um, you want to start with a new pump. You definitely don't want to put these into a used pump because um, the, the gears kind of, I don't know if you call it clearance themselves, but a worn pump will have the wrong clearance for this gear. So you want to start with a new pump, put them in, let's do it. They're ground and machine. You need to look at the non-ground surfaces, and that'll tell it's you all ground. Oh, that little edge. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? That looks solid to me. No, I don't think that they are. Yeah, this inside surface looks. Yeah, you can see there, there's porosity in it right there. Look on that, yeah, that edge right there. You can see it's bumpy in the way that, uh... Yeah, you can see, like, the grain of it. Yeah. Huh, interesting. That's not a bad set of gears, though, for a factory set. No? Maybe well, a lot of them, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. These things are really nice. Look, they're, like, polished. I don't know if you can see there. It's, like, really nice. And they're marked with the part number. Put this in here. Stop talking about it and just do it. Okay. So this backing plate, uh, it's kind of difficult actually to find a torque spec for these things. I'm seeing 89 inch pounds, I'm seeing 94 inch pounds. I'm gonna do 100 inch pounds, there's really not that much torque um, and I really don't want this to come apart. So if someone can, I don't know, hang me out to dry in the comments. Comment if you know the answer. Oh yeah, yeah, you can hold it. Probably need a little help here. It's not a bad plan. Cool. Ready to go on. Dwayne, why do you have a different shirt on? So I was hot. You know, hot. No, because you were hot and sweaty and stinky. And you guys are complaining. 
about it yet. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna throw this pump on. It's got like little flats in here, flats on the crankshaft. So you kind of have to clock it to get it to go on there. And it should have like a two stage. So you should get one and then it should go on. And, yeah, so it's sitting flat. Okay, we got three bolts. Um, so one of the bolts here, um, this one has a real long one that comes from the tensioner on this side, so we'll put that on later. These three right now. And I actually don't remember off the top of my head what the torque spec is for these. I want to say it's 100 inch pounds. It's 90 or 100. Um, is, that right? is it 90? It's 90. Yeah. These are pretty long bolts, so yeah, you, I don't know how much torque you want. They're like M4s, uh, I don't know what these are. They're pretty small, but yeah. Figure it out what it actually is. That is a reasonably expensive oil pump now. Actually, this GT500 pump, I would recommend it even if you're not revving high. It's a really nice upgrade for any mod motor. It's a really, really nice upgrade. Feels about right. Feels so light for something that's so critical, critical. but you got stuff stacked on here. Yeah, so. Although I don't think it actually pushes on it. Okay, so we got those three. We'll do the last one. We put the tiny set on. Cool, we're getting somewhere. Gear. All right, what do we got? The gear. We should probably clean this up. Some brake clean. Um, put that on. There's no reason to put a new gear on one of these. Um, most of the timing components are almost indestructible. The only case that I would put a new gear on one of these motors would be um, if you have a two-piece gear. So a lot of the two valves, I don't know if any four valves came with the two-piece gear, but... Um, Early ones did. Did they? Um, so you definitely want to have the one-piece uh, gear. Or obviously if you have timing team damage and things whipping around in there, or, you know, but the Despite dropping valves and bashing pistons, the timing chain was in good condition. Amazingly good condition, it's crazy. Let's make sure this is in good shape. Yeah, looks great. Make sure it's going to play. Does it go? It goes with the thing out, right? Yep, so you can time it. Yeah. See your little dots on there. Cool, let's put some heads on, yeah. All right, what are we gonna do for the heads? So we gotta put in the dowels, which are right here. Yeah, these are the, so these are dowels that locate the cylinder head. Um, obviously the, the liver and I had to take them out when they we did, the surface yeah, flat. did the uh, work on them. All right. Two. You can see the mark on there too, for which way it was in before. Sure looks like. So the, the clean edge should go into the block because yeah. the, the rough edge is where they use the puller to pull it out. Cylinder head changing kits from uh, Ford Racing. This is by far the cheapest way to do your your cylinder heads because it comes with uh, with new torque to yield head bolts and the uh, head gaskets. Um, I think this costs like 120 bucks or something. Like that. I can't tell if this one's in here. Let me check it out. Be careful with these uh, MLS head gaskets. They, they can, will cut you. They will slice you like razors. I need something to cut this. I got a couple of scars to prove it. Yeah. Are you excited? 
Um, do they say No, top? they're, they're uh, oh, you mean which direction they're going? Yeah. I don't know. They're definitely universal. You can use either side on either side. The way you sure. can tell the writing is the tab. No, where the tab. You should have the. Yeah, this tab. I can't believe I'm using it. You guys are laughing at me. I'm using a freaking pen. So you get one bag for each head. These NLS head gaskets are fantastic. If anybody tells you you need to run some sort of aftermarket thing, they're lying to you. Nevertheless, you're, you're running, running like a billion pounds of boots. Well, I mean, if you're doing something extreme, you're probably oh, running a different block. Yeah. And never use copper spray, anything like that on NLS gaskets. It does not work. Despite what the slot in the Oh, wait, we gotta, we gotta look at this. Hold on. So, I actually wanna show this. Oh. One thing you want to do here is when you're putting an assembled head, because you can't obviously can't do this with a push rod motor, you want to show right here. So whatever side you're putting the head onto, you want to make sure all the pistons are down, just in case, because with an assembled head, so you got them all away from top mm -hmm. and center. So you get an assembled head, when you're doing the timing and stuff like that, some of these valves are gonna open. Ooh, I got some. I got some. I have to get that out of there. Oh well. Um, when you put the head on, you just want to make sure no valves come in contact with the pistons. Mm -hmm. it's pretty we have oil leaking out from our lifters that have bled down. Yeah. Okay, somebody want to grab a couple of those to lift it up? Oh yeah, that's a good plan. Here, let's just do a bolt. Here. You hold it. That's what I should have done. I look super professional right now, don't I? <laughs> I'm holding it, I got it. And these, I think, are three lubes, it looks like? Yeah. No, uh -huh. no that's just packaging. You want to put oil. On Where's our bucket of oil? A bucket put of oil. There. You definitely want to put oil on that. Here was already a bunch of oil. So we're putting some oil on the threads to get a correct torque reading. You don't have to use anything fancy like the ARP stuff. Now the question many of you will probably be thinking is, if I spent the money on ARP mains, why am I not spending the money on ARP head bolts? It's because there's no reason to with what I'm doing. Um, you notice when we did the, the bottom end, we had to take it apart, put it back together a whole bunch of times. So the studs really protect the threads in the aluminum block. Here we're one and done. We're putting it on, we're torquing it, and these these head bolts are way more, uh, way above what I need to keep this thing together. And the other thing you need to keep in mind, in some vehicles, you actually can't pull the heads with head studs. Yeah. Um, you know, install it, so. I just didn't need to spend the money, so I didn't. Okay, a little trick, um, particularly for head bolts, because you're putting so much force on them. Stand on your, uh, your engine stand, because then the torque is contained within it, and it, the thing won't turn on you. Um, now there's going to be someone with a safety problem with that. You know? Don't fall off and hurt yourself. We don't want anyone hurt. So let's, let's get these a little tighter. As soon as you said that, Dwayne lost his balance. <laughs> That's how it goes, right? I'm no ballerina, let's be honest right now. Sometimes it's a you know, do as I say, not as I do type uh, situation. Yeah. I think that's basically the essence of our channel. <laughs> we are doing a lot of things that I would not recommend someone else to do if they care about their time or money. <laughs> <laughs> Example one, buy a coyote. <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> 
Careful. I can't tell if it's. Felt like it was grabbing. That little tin noise you're making? Um, with head gaskets, you gotta start and kind of work your way out so it, it kind of like, like put, it's like putting on a sticker. Except for an Olds motor, which has you go outside in for some God knows reason. But it's an Oldsmobile. So yeah. maybe that's part of the reason why they failed as a company. Now they're gonna have an army of Oldsmobile guys. <laughs> The only BOP engine worth building is a Buick. Everything else is junk. There, I said it. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Travis. <laughs> Travis has strong opinions about a lot of things. Okay, now we got a 90 degrees. Yeah. That was 90? No. No, no, no. You have to undo them. No, no, you do the 90 first and then you undo them. I thought. Oh, it's 90 degrees, not 90 foot pounds. Okay, I thought it was 90 foot pounds. No. Especially when you're torquing head bolts, if something feels off, stop, check your torque, torque gauge, check what you're doing, because that's the quickest way to break these things. And especially with a bolt this long, yeah. or to overstretch it. Overstretch it, and break it and bad. And you're gonna have a bad time. Okay. I'm gonna, make a, I'm gonna make a suggestion. Yeah. For you. Okay. The next time you do that, it would be easier if you stood here and did it like this. Whatever. It's not that's just that's just a dad thing. Just guys stop is... teaching me lessons, Dad. <laughs> All right. So then it's just what rinse, wash, repeat on the other side. Yep. Basically. I feel like we're a little more organized this time. We are getting at the end of our. Uh, well, we were just kind of feeding the end of them. We were in the short block. It's, uh, it, seems, it just feels like we're getting more done. Well, we did just put make this motor at least 50% bigger. Because Ford motors are all heads. <laughs> if this was a beer, you wouldn't want to drink it because it's all head. <laughs> God, beer sounds good right now. I think we got some uh, lemon squeezes uh, really? in the... Uh, in the fridge. You might need to run and go get one, but I don't know. No shop is complete without a beer fridge. Lemon squash fridge, according to the Australian. Let's take a tour on this motor, huh? Look at our, our rods, they're so little. They're little, all together now. See how much uh, weight they had to take out because our rods and pistons were light and the throws got real light. See, they had to drill these monster holes to balance it. Some of the weight came out. Look at these exhaust ports. Ooh, fancy. All uh, CNC machined. Very cool. Oh, all right. So good. You got two heads. Look at that. Starting to look like a motor, Dwayne. I like it. Okay, so here we are modifying the phasers. Now I had a set of phasers in the motor when I had it, you guys saw the dyno break where it made like what, 380 something? So they worked okay, 
but um, they had a little trouble with control both at idle when the oil pressure was lower and at really high RPM when you got the valve train bouncing around. So what Ford did is since I bought these set, Ford had revised them a couple times and I bought the latest revision. So they, they modified some of the oil passages in there. They changed the bolt. So these have a, a bolt that has oil holes in it. Um, and you, you can't reuse these bolts anyway when you put them back together, so you need a new set anyway. Um, I just went ahead and bought the new ones because I want everything to be right in this motor. Maybe I didn't need to do that. Um, one of the big things is, so you can see how this thing works. You come in here. So it allows the part that's on the cam to move separate separate from the part that's on the, um, on the chain. And <clears throat> so it allows you to variable the cam timing. Um, this is pretty cool. This is something that actually makes power. We'll show you guys what it makes in the dyno test. So what's going on here? So we have this comp piece that has these little blockers built into them. And this is a regular back piece. It doesn't have anything um, on it. So this goes down inside these veins. Um, look at it. These go down inside the veins. And what that little blocker does is it limits the motion. It prevents... Um, it prevents the camshaft from moving too far with aftermarket cams because you'll get pissed in the valve problems if you if you retard the cam too much. So this limits us to I think like 20 or 22 degrees of cam movement, which is plenty for for performance reasons. Um, so that's what we got to do. We got to toss these in. These are actually pretty hard to assemble because they've got this spring on here, and the spring causes it to default to an advanced, fully advanced position. And then this little thing in here is a locker. So it'll actually drop down. There's a thing inside there. It's locked now. See that? I can't move it. So when there's no oil pressure, that locks into the fully advanced position. Um, and the spring does that, puts that in that fully pos advanced position. So if you had a loss of oil pressure or something, or you're just starting the engine like we will, um, it'll keep it from just knocking around inside there. This is really important, this piece, it's really easy to lose and the revisions include a new version of this. Um, this really helps lock it at, at, at idle to keep it from rattling around. It rattled around before. So we're gonna get to it. So that would be fully advanced, yeah. Okay, that's right. So now we put the locker in. And that should, if we wiggle this a little bit, yeah. Yeah, now it's, it's locked in place. Put the spring. And this piece in. So that's fully advanced. We put the backing plate. You can see the wear mark from before where this uh where the locking pin was pushing on it. What it does is it's it's machined well so it's all the way against the advanced or retarded side, sorry. Okay, so we're taking the backing plate off. Um this was the one that was together. So we actually put this one all the way together. Um, you guys saw us, we kind of failed a little bit with getting the springs in to develop a process. We'll show that to you right now. So let's, so these with the pins, you gotta be a little careful. So I'm gonna take- It's a lot of spring force. It's a lot of spring force. Let's Watch your fingers. Get them out of the way. So this will release a little bit of it, not much. Okay. Now this is, this the, big is the big one. There it goes. Boom. Right. Now we'll get these off. Now we have to take that one apart. I think I may have already let the spring out on that one. So let's keep. So the old version of the cam phase actually use different bolts. So we gotta be careful we don't mix any of this up. One. I still do have spring pressure on this one. This one doesn't have the second bolt you already did. So this is going to be the spring pressure one. Goes. Every now and again, I'm right. <laughs> Tighten these. Uh, <laughs> is that you did? I put that one a few years ago. Man, I can't. Jeez, we might have to use the 3 8 impact maybe. 
Or am I just being a pansy? That's not gonna have as much jam as your arm does. Oh, this thing's, this thing's surprising me sometimes. Maybe those bolts we won't even have them anywhere near. Yeah, so these, um, this old one. This um, was like a 20, 2005-ish version. Yeah, this was a really early version of it. Um, you see, it doesn't even have a spike. It's just a long bolt. Yeah, it's just a long bolt. Um, let me get this out of here. And you see this one, it doesn't even have a preloader on it. It's just the spring. So that's probably part of the reason why this one wasn't as is good. Ford had a lot of problems with these these phasers. So let's get it locked. Okay. It's locked. Yeah. Right. And then we'll get this. Don't forget your spring and your plunger. Yep. By the way. No, that's right. The point goes oh, down. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Good call, Travis. You've been saying that a lot this episode. I'm just trying to make you love working on Fords. Never gonna happen. So, which ones do we need? And now, if we had the proper tool, we wouldn't have to do what we're about to do, which is maybe a little dangerous. Not too bad, though. We but, figured out but a not too bad. Um, safe wave. Where is the pin? What am I doing here? There we go. Okay. Take this. So we're using an old camshaft. Yeah, this is not a good camshaft. This came off the original. Oh, this was the... Uh, This is the uh, camshaft out of the F-150 you got the heads out of. All right, so we'll do the first one. All right, so this is our process. Pair of vice grips, put it onto the, I'll do it this way, put it onto the tab. Pull it around to the first stop. All right, that's, you got it? Did I do the wrong one? Oops, I think I put a bolt in the wrong one. Oh, that's the full spring. Nope, I put a bolt in the wrong one. Can you get it? Yep, it's there. Okay. okay. So I messed up. Put a bolt in the wrong one. So, here's your... So you can uh, come around and show them this, how the second one works. What you do is might be able to get an aerial shot. Yeah, come around over here. So you have to. There's a second stud bolt, and this puts even more preload on the spring. See here, you pull the spring out around it. Can you get it? Good in there. You got a couple threads. Good. Is it got a couple threads, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Tighten see. this up. All right, we can turn it over now and take it off the cam. Pop it off. And now we will be able to run variable valve timing. Actually, it's variable cam timing. I'm sorry, not variable valve timing. So I can't change the overlap, only the cam position. But we'll actually, in the dyno test, when we finally dyno this thing, I'll show you what it does without it on and what it does with it on so you guys can make your own determination. Even LS motors can benefit, and maybe one day we'll show that too. Maybe. 
All right, cool. So we did it. Rock and roll. All right, so we got the heads on. Next up, timing. Yeah, since now we've got the oil pump on, we can we can put the timing setup on. So first, we need to put the uh, little actuators. So these control the oil flow into the phaser to allow the, the, the cam to move. So let's toss them on. They're pretty easy. Got a little, oh, got a little dowel to locate them. Okay, so we're gonna do that. These are like a whopping 90 inch pounds. Yeah. And then all the timing stuff is 90 inch pounds. We were going to put all new timing chain guides on this, but it sent us one of the wrong ones. So I got one old one here that we'll have to deal with for the time being. Maybe if we get another one in time, I will fix that. So you're going to fix it. This is just for monster purposes. I'm not going to let them run it like this. <laughs> It really wouldn't. This is the tension side, so it really wouldn't make any difference. Okay, now we're gonna throw the phasers that we did on. So that's the next thing. So these are marked with a, you can see they have like, I don't know if you can't, let me come around. So these have a little R right here in them. Um, and then they have an L as well. You can see that L. So L is for left hand, which is driver side, and R is for right hand. You gotta use the new bolts. And we're probably not gonna be able to torque these until we get something to kind of hold the crank on the back, right? Um what you gotta do actually is you kinda gotta like hit them with the hug and dug a little bit. <laughs> then uh, it's the one exception to our no impact. Um, and then we'll use the holder on here once we get a chain on it to torque them. And you're just gonna have to turn the crank really slowly, carefully. Make sure we don't hurt anything. Is that the dark master link right there? Wayne? Yeah, you can see it's pretty good. It is. That right there? Yeah. Without the tab? I think so. Be able to tie really quick. Yeah, it's gotta be that one. Because let's test the other one. Yeah, that's okay. And then the tensioner. There's an L and an R, so we need the L. The cleaner L, the one that we know came off the motor. Yeah. And then we have the bolts. There we go. We might have to compress these. Yeah. 
computer now. You're independent? Yeah. They're actually, I'm going to take it. They might be missing. It's not very comfortable. No. Compress them. All right, so we got to compress these before we can get them in. Let's do that real quick. Okay, so we've got to compress these so that we can install them. There's a ratchet mechanism on here. In this little hole, there's a mechanism and you can pry it back to let the ratchet um, compress. The ratchet's there so that if you don't have oil pressure, like when it sits for a while when you first start it, it keeps tension on the tensioner. This in here. And then you have to pull the ratcheting mechanism back. There's like a spring-loaded thing in there. Sometimes it can be hard to hold, but it's all oily. This one's got some oil in it, so it's not easy to compress. You don't want to go hard on these. Do it a little slower. Okay. Now what you have to do is push. Want to get that pin ready? Yeah. Okay, so you have to push this and pry that back. It doesn't want to... That doesn't want to go. Okay, there you go. Tension on the vise? No, no, you should be. You can try and tighten it. Can you try and tighten the vise? Will that go in? No, no. try and tighten the vise. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, now it should go in. No? A little bit more, maybe? Try it, yeah. Okay, now try it. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Okay. So now that pin is holding it compressed. All it's right. Like a grenade. Don't pull cool. the pin until you're ready. Exactly. All right, cool. We'll install them now. All right, now that we got that compressed, we can put it up. Get this in here. Set it up. Even though it seems like there should be a gasket, there actually isn't a gasket for these. No, not for the uh, not for the metal ones. The they have um, polyamide plastic. Style yeah, they have these like plastic ones. Actually, it's originally came on the three valve. But with really high heat and high oil temperatures, sometimes the seals in them can fail. Those actually have a like press and place seal on the back side of them. Um, but these ones do not. What is that? It's like a 10. It's like a 10. My ratchets. I don't know where I put all my ratchets. Okay, well, whatever. Get them tight. Okay, and then let's do the second. Um, let's do the second chain. Okay, so you got that. So we're gonna have to actually turn the motor on this one. Let's torque this first. Okay, so I've got some slack. Do you want to pull the pin, or do we wait? No. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna show a little trick actually. So I want to give this back some slack. There's a reason why. So if you notice on these things. There's a little bit of play in it when you see that. So what I want is I want the cam to be as advanced as possible. So I want this back against, so you want it turned towards the opposite direction of the uh, motion of the motor. And then I will. Okay. That should move. And then we can put this back with full tension. And we'll turn the cam. So now we have to torque this. Oh, it's 30 foot pounds and additional 90. So he wasn't right. Okay. 30 foot pounds. Oh, fair. 30 foot pounds. Where was the? Pretty sure the shot. 15. It's on there. Do you want me to hold that with the breaker? Um. Yeah, we can do that. So yeah, we're gonna have to go opposite directions here. I'm gonna be like this, and it's gonna put load on that. Okay. All right, and then we'll get the, uh, we need to get like a, I don't know, what are we gonna use for this? Here, you can use the breaker bar. I'll use the. And I can use the. No, here, we'll use a. Half inch. 
Okay. There you go. Can you hold it with that? Is the question. I think so. You should have mechanical advantage over this. Okay. Oh, hold on, they're going the wrong. Sorry. So now I don't know how much it actually turned. Oh well. Okay. Should be tight enough. Right. Okay. Everyone out there is like, you weren't doing that scientifically. You it's tight. Alright, where's the breaker bar? Right there. Okay. Put the tension on this. Okay, so we can turn the motor over. Let's get it back up here to like top it center. Okay. Now we need to get these tight. Or you see how we're spending all this time Googling stuff? That's what you guys do at home, but you never see the other people on YouTube doing it. So we're being honest right now, right? <laughs> or maybe they actually do know what they're doing. Or they prep. <laughs> I'm just gonna do 25 foot pounds because I'm pretty sure that's what it actually is for the iron ones. I was gonna say, I think they're 25. I mean, what? Sockets on it. Oh, good call. Probably gonna have to cut a bunch of that out, aren't we? No, we're gonna keep it in for the realism. Keep it in for the real. I feel like people are gonna get bored watching. You guys bored watching that? Let us know in the comments. Did we just start skipping ahead to the good parts, like burnouts and stuff. That's All what right. people want to see. Now we're gonna pull the pin. Pull the pin. Boom. Click. All right. So that side's done. Um. Let's try to get this side. So part of our problem here is that we're turning the wrong way. So we need to go a long way to get. Do we just try to turn this the whole way around? There we go. I hope we didn't put a dent in the piston. <laughs> we could bore scope it and find out. We actually need to go back the other way some. So I can actually turn the crank. So I'll be able to turn the crank a little bit. So what's the relationship between this and the... You want this pointed straight up? You want... So you just want the marks to line up. It's pretty oh, simple. Okay. Oh, it's... so you want this to match the dot? Yeah. Okay. That's all you're trying to do. Is uh, let's get the dots line up. Ford made it pretty simple. I mean, if you're doing a car that doesn't have variable cam timing, you can take the time to degree it, to degree it, which I wholeheartedly recommend on mod motors because it makes a big difference, particularly on four valves to set all the cams up, makes a really big difference. But with this, I'm varying the cams in real time. So it's a little silly to get broken up. Over, over a few degrees. Yeah, because you're just going to move them anyway. No, we'll put the we'll put the guide in. Okay. You got it? I think so. Okay. Okay, now let's put so their tension on. You're happy with that? Everything's where it's supposed to be? Yeah, we'll ch we'll double check it. Okay. Don't use a nugga dugga on this. What the heck? As I drop this, my hands are covered in oil. It's aluminum head, aluminum block. Don't nugga dugga this. I'm sure many people do. Okay. You've been cast iron, you shouldn't do it. Oh, 
Okay. And pull that pin. Yes. <laughs> All right, now let's make sure we've got everything lined up the way we want it. Okay, now everything's got tension. So what you're looking for, we got a dark on the chain on the R. We got a dark chain mark on the L. Come underneath here. You got a dark chain right here for this side. Why isn't that tension? So actually, we should probably shine a light and make sure. We get a light. Actually, isn't there one right here? Right here. Let's see. I think it is the dark chain. Yeah. So there's the dark chain mark. You can see, I don't know if you can see in there, that's a different color from the other ones. But it is on the dot right there. Right there, right there. Cool. We are, we are timed. All right, we're ready to turn it over. It's eight cylinders, we got all the... Here's some of the squealing and stuff right there is because this doesn't have any oil pressure in it, so it's compressing them and loosening them with valve spring pressure, but motor turns over. Cool. Cool. Rock and roll. Here we go. We did it! It's a long block! Yeah, we did it. We conquered, we didn't let it conquer us, we conquered this ugly junkyard come flagration of parts. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm very happy. We got the long block done. Um, what do you think, Travis? What's gonna happen next time? So the next episode is not going to end until this is in the car and fired up. And fired up. I think personally that's ambitious, but I like your enthusiasm. I like your positivity. Um, hopefully, yeah. I mean, it, we'll at least have it in the car. At least have it in the car. So thank you for sticking through all that um, horribly tedious and boring measurements and grinding of piston rings. I'm sure there's people out there who love that stuff. You know what I mean? I do it because I know what the end result is, but I don't actually love physically doing it. Yeah, nobody does. Um, but yeah, the fun part's next. We're gonna we're gonna party like it's 1993. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah, so burnouts, awesomeness. Like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Get smart. Go fast. Thanks, guys.